take a moment of stillness to come before God and offer to him all that is on our hearts. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Well, it is good to be back with you. It feels like it's been a mighty long time. You know what they say about buses? That you wait ages for one and then two come along at once? Well, you've got me next week as well, so sorry about that. Uh, but it is really good to be with you on this last day of the church's year. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, and it is Stir Up Sunday, the day you traditionally make your Christmas puts. <laughs> Not me, Sandra, nor I. Would anybody be making a Christmas pudding today? No. We are dependent upon the good caterers, the supermarkets, perhaps. Uh, but yes, we will, we will be acknowledging Sarah Sunday, but we will be focusing more on Christ the King. What does it mean to say that Christ is King, so that Christ is Lord? And we'll be thinking about some mistakes that we might make about this feast. Today we're going to celebrate Holy Communion all together. What I'm going to do is come first to the
those who cannot um, come forward to the rail. So we will do that first and then welcome the music group to come up and receive and then everybody else. Um, as ever, you are welcome to receive from the chalice or from the little cups. Um, and if you just want to receive the bread, that is no lesser action either. If you would like to receive a blessing, please just indicate that to me when you come forward. And so today, as we remember that Christ is King, so we sing our first hymn. Please stand if you're comfortable as we sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs>
So I hear these words of absolution and freedom to you today. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And today's special prayer for this feast day. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory, now and forever. Amen. We have our first reading. A reading for the, from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. <coughs> Thanks be to God. Wow, what an image, what a revelation of Christ in glory reigning above all and in all and through all picture of power and authority and majesty. And so keeping those in mind, we're going to sing two hymns back to back, King of Hit Kings, Majesty number 1000, and Majesty number 454. If you're able to do so, would you please stand? <laughs> Thank you. 
Now have our gospel reading. <coughs> the gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to the end. The sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They, will, they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For my sins, I studied theology at university. In my first year, I had to take a module called something like The Doctrine of God. Who is God? What is God's nature? What does the cross mean? Does the resurrection need to have happened? Oh my goodness. It was very boggling and quite a bit daunting. I remember wanting to have a lie down in a dark room after each lecture, not because I was hungover, dare I say, but I do remember that in the very first lecture, the lecturer said these words to us, choose your heresy wisely. Choose your heresy wisely. It's a reminder that we do not get this God stuff right. We get our language so wrong about God. Our experience of God is incomplete and impartial. We see only in part. And we communicate only in part too. It sounds like I'm making an excuse for this sermon, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes. Right now, our best attempts to describe God are a bit like preschoolers' drawings of their family on their fridge. This is mummy. This is daddy. Am I that purple? Am I rectangular? Is my nose that big? One day, our communication and our uh, communion with God will be perfect, but for now, we continue in error, despite our best efforts and intentions. 
So today we celebrate the feast of Christ the King. I want us to think about two mistakes that we can make here. Now this church, in all its beauty, does not have any stained glass. But if you go to churches and cathedrals up and down the country, you might see an image of Christ the King in stained glass. And he looks majestic and authoritative and powerful, perhaps an orb, perhaps a scepter, definitely a crown. Depicted in power and great glory, it's like the image from the reading to the Ephesians. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Christ in glory. But those windows make a mistake. As often all our images of Christ do. Because you know what we like to do? We like to make Christ look a bit like us. In this country, we have made Christ in our images, not from the Middle East, not with darker skin, not depicted as a Jewish man, oh no. He's blonde-haired and blue-eyed with ringlets. He's white and he's very, very handsome. I'm not saying this to say that we can't depict Christ's image, but we need to remind ourselves that we shouldn't feel comfortable when we see images of Christ like that. I haven't actually watched it, but there's a Stacey Dooley documentary about her going to The Undertakers. I don't know if anybody saw it. Apparently one of the um, civil celebrants said, well, I'm a civil celebrant because I can't believe in all that Jesus is white stuff. I would hope that none of us believe in that Jesus is white stuff, but people can take that from our images that we have in abundance and think that's what we believe. And there's a bit of danger here, because if we start thinking that our image is reflected onto God, then that impacts how we imagine God. If we start complacing our appearance, my appearance of God, this can get a bit dangerous as where does that end? Do I think that Christ actually shares my opinions? And my values, my political preferences, and all of those things? It's a bit of a slippery slope. Christ, when we say Christ is king, he's a different kind of king. He's not a king in our own image, whatever that may be for us. So when we say Christ is Lord, we mean that Christ is Lord, not us. And part of our discipleship is recognising this error, which we fall into all the time without realising it. Christ is Lord. You are Lord. It's your way, your presence I seek, not my comfort. So the other reading we heard gives another image of Christ as King. <laughs> and this reveals another mistake we can make. Now it begins on a similar theme to the Ephesians one. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory. Okay. But then there's a radical shift. Christ the King reveals that those who are welcomed into his kingdom are those who fed him, those who gave him a drink, those who clothed him, those who visited him. This king is passive. This king is nourished and sustained and nurtured by others. He is depicted as being vulnerable. The Lord and King ruling above all is also present in the most vulnerable, the least of these. The people, dare I say, who are different to and perhaps seen as demanding by us. Now there are so many striking things about this passage but I want to focus on the hiddenness. There's a shock in that reading because those who are commended by God, they're not aware of what they've done. The righteous are surprised that they've been caring for the king of creation because they've just been giving of themselves freely. They haven't realized that it's in Jesus that they've been serving as they've gone along. 
They've done it for the Lord without realising it. Their devotion was without an ounce of self-consciousness. So the mistake then here is to think that it's only the most obvious Christian things that we do. Countless devotion to Christ, spending time in prayer, or coming to church or reading our Bibles. Mm -mm. Here we see that Christ the King is served in our hidden, secret actions towards the vulnerable. (coughs) When we are serving the lost and the least with such genuine love that does not count the cost, then we're serving Christ. But I wonder if, like me, perhaps, you might be a bit self-conscious. How do we get past that self-consciousness so that we can serve Christ with our whole selves? I want to read you a poem. It's called The Covenant, and it's by a lady called Margaret Halaska. The father knocks at my door, seeking a home for his son. Rent is cheap, I say. I don't want to rent, I want to buy, says God. I'm not sure I want to sell, actually, but you have a look around. I think I will, says God. You know, maybe I will let you have a room or two. I like it, says God. I'll take two. I like what I see. You might decide to give me more one day. I can wait, says God. Well, I'd like to give you more, but it's a bit difficult because I need some room for me. I know, says God. I'll wait. I like what I see. Well, there is that other room I don't really need that much. Maybe you could have that. Thanks. I'll take it. I could give you the whole house, but I'm just not sure. Think on it, says God. I wouldn't put you out. Your house would be mine and my son would live in it. You'd have more space than you ever had before. I don't understand at all. I know, says God, but I can't tell you about that. You'll have to discover it for yourself. It can only happen if you let him have the whole house. Well, that sounds a bit risky, I say. Yes, yes, says God, but try me. I'm not sure, Lord. I'll let you know. I can wait, says God. I like what I see. The poem is a picture of us unfurling our hands towards God, of us opening ourselves up inch by inch to letting him be Lord of our whole selves, our whole lives. We're giving our hearts over so that they become, we become fully his. He is truly Lord, not us. And when we do this, and it doesn't all happen at once, It's an everyday decision. We become attentive to Christ's image, an image that does not look like us. Christ the King is present in those who are so very different from us. Shortly we'll receive Holy Communion. We remind ourselves that Christ is a King who sacrificed himself for us. He has given everything for us so that we might know and love him and welcome him into our lives. And he gives himself into our hands today. This is my body. This is my blood. Coming so close to us that his presence will fill us. He is present with here with us in our vulnerabilities. Just as he is present with the least. So today I invite you as you come forward and you extend your hands. Waiting to receive the bread. But in that action you're also offering to God yourselves.
making a bit more room for God in your life, offering to God our mistakes, our self-consciousness, our hardness of heart, our fears, and trusting that his abundant love and mercy and grace can transform us. Christ is Lord. May you have the grace to proclaim him as Lord of your lives this day in a new way. Amen. If you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we say the creed together. <coughs> believe and trust in God the Father. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now welcome Jean to come forward and lead us in prayer and reflection. Please be seated. I recently came across a song by Robin Mark. Robin has written several of the more modern songs that we sing. And this song just spoke to me and I thought it would be good to use it for our intercessions. And I hope you just focus on the words and what it says as we listen to a recording of this song. Thank you. 
is our common prayer. Who we'll call upon your name? We humble ourselves before you. We humble ourselves. Come in this so much June. That was Robin Mark and Come Heal This Land. And so as we come to pray for healing for this land, healing for ourselves, healing for our hearts, we share God's peace with one another, remind that we are reconciled. So if you're able to do so, would you please stand? <coughs> Since as members of one body, you're called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace with you. And if we're able to, so we may stay sing our next hymn, which is Servant King, number 162.
could I invite the offertory box to be brought forward, please? Thank you, Elsa. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this money to offer, the fruit of our labours, the prayers of our hearts and the skills you've given us. Take us and use our possessions to do your work in the world to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is here. The Spirit is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Just a reminder that all are welcome who know and love the Lord Jesus to receive his presence in the bread and the wine. We'll go to those who are unable to come forward first, then invite the music group to come up, and then you're all very welcome.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of notices from me. First, I'd like to give you a bit of a spoiler alert. <laughs> Greetings <laughs> from Mary and from Joseph. And a very big thanks to June Frisbee, who made Mary and Joseph. Um, so these are our, yeah, I can't do that so Mary and Joseph are going to be travelling around hospitable homes in Great Notley and they're also going to be staying at the schools, the nursery and the care home as well. So this is called the Posada, you've done it before a while ago I believe. 
So Mary and Joseph are, if you'd like them, to come and stay at your house. There are still a few slots, about six left, on my little sign-up sheet here. It seems that weekends aren't the popular option for Mary and Joseph to come and stay at your house. But you can bring them with you on whatever you're doing, because they're going to go round... Oh, excuse the sermon. They're going to go round with a little book where you can document what they've been up to. If not, you can just have them stay at your house for a week. Not a week, for a day. Um, So please do take a look. This will be around um, in coffee afterwards. What you need to do is get it to the person after you. Okay, so do make sure you're able to to do that. And um, I'm there for any hiccups that may occur en route. Uh, So Mary and Joseph, we're going to start their journey next Sunday. And then they will come back here on Christmas Eve. And at midnight, we will reveal the baby as well. (laughs) So thank you to June. And please do sign up for the Posada if you'd like Mary and Joseph to come to your house. It's not just for kids, everybody. Um, Yes, so please do join in there. Just one other thing that we really need to talk about. Roman is being licensed as an associate priest. He's getting a new hat. Not an actual hat. It's not going to change what he actually does. He's still going to be across the three churches. Um, but he's finished his curacy, and so we're celebrating this new phase in his ministry. Uh, the bishop will come. The new archdeacon will come. Um, and it's on Tuesday evening here. There's going to be a supper served beforehand at 6.30 out there, and then the service will begin at 7.30. So you are all very welcome to come and attend and support Roman in this new stage of ministry. Now, Val hasn't noticed that she'd like to give. I don't know if you read your Bible every day, but... Um, I use these notes from the IBRA, which have a reading for every day of the year and a comment from different people each week. Uh, just, it's quite short, it only takes sort of five minutes to read your reading and everything. But if you think you would like to uh, read the Bible through the year with a bit of help, then please come and see me afterwards and sign up and I'll get you a copy. I'm afraid they cost $12.99 and postage and packing, but if I get enough people, I get a bit of a discount. So, um, you know, if you'd like to sign up for that, do come and see me afterwards. And I've got it here if you want to have a look to see what it's like, okay? Thank you very much. Val, any burning notices? Yes, Stephen. Oh, <laughs> Stephen first, then Suzanne. Cut off the mark. Yeah, the make ones last century, but me and my mum got to celebrate on Wednesday by going to Prince Louis for a lunch <laughs> to celebrate. Won't slice it on Wednesday because we can't make it on Tuesday evening. Oh, that's a chick I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> not go and then go to the pub. <laughs> that's lovely, Stephen. So Stephen's not going to the licensing, but we'll be going to the pub to celebrate the next day. <laughs> lovely. Enjoy that, Stephen and Cathy. Super. I might go to the licensing and then go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Wendy has kindly printed me off some smaller flyers for our Christmas tree festival. I've printed some this morning, and if anyone would like to take part home and just put them through your doors, just in your roads, just to, you know, boost our um, attendees a little bit, that'd be great. I'll leave them out back there. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing in organising that, Suzanne. It's going to be a bumper year, so many trees. So thank you for all you're doing. Wonderful. Okay, so we come to our final hymn now. And I pick this for the final line of the hymn. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. As we sing Love Divine, would you please start?
So let us pray this prayer together. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us ask for God's blessing upon us all. Christ, our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Do stay for coffee, but when you do go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.